Okay, you're on, Joyce. Okay. Uncle Kenny, who is 94 years old, has walked beside me my entire life. He and his wife, along with their four boys, provided a respite from my turbulent home life when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Uncle Kenny and his wife, Ellen, shared their love of books with me as a young girl. Uncle Kenny grew up during the Depression on a small farm in Douglas County. Several years ago, after his wife Ellen died, Uncle Kenny wrote a short memoir of those years on the farm. He remembered how hard he and his family worked, especially during the hot and stressful days of haying season. Mm -hmm. He shared his love for his hard-working parents. His mother worked alongside him doing the twice daily milking of about 40 uh, dairy cows what? before the days of milking machines. He's got a funny story in there too. <laughs> His mother would weave red, red rugs on her homemade loom and to make some money for the family and also delivered Montgomery Ward catalogs. <laughs> to people in the area with her other son who drove the car filled with catalogs. Uncle Kenny provided for his family as he worked numerous jobs throughout his long life. He worked for the Burlington Northern Railroad in Superior, hmm. the U.S. Steel Plant in Duluth until it closed in 1981 during the recession that hit the country. Mm -hmm. It was devastating to Uncle Kenny, his family, and to the area with so many people out of work. He worked at UW Superior, keeping the boilers that heated the campus in good repair. Uncle Kenny finally found a job in Two Harbors, Minnesota, which was over an hour away from where he lived. He often had to drive through blizzards because he worked at the night shift oh, and on icy roads, those two-lane curvy roads. Trains filled with taconite from the open mm. pit iron ore mines on the Misabi Range needed to have the taconite transferred from the moving trains by machines operated by people like Uncle Kenny onto the huge long ore docks where the taconite would then be loaded onto the ore boats that brought the taconite to steel mills in Ohio and Pennsylvania. During those years, Uncle Kenny worked with his dad, Consta, his uncle Charlie, and his sons in the woods, also making hay and other part-time jobs. Now that Uncle Kenny is 94 Jeez. years old, he tells me that he has outlived his savings. He continues to live in his old farmhouse, which needs some work. He mows his own lawn and cooks for himself. Uncle Kenny can no longer afford the cost of supplemental insurance to Medicare. He hasn't seen a dentist for many years. He continues to crawl up and down the steep steps to the basement to keep the wood-burning furnace going to save fuel costs. He needed a new furnace last year, and thankfully I was able to mm. help him financially with paying for the new gas furnace. Now the state of Wisconsin is telling Uncle Kenny and the residents that they will need to replace their septic systems with new septic systems at a cost of about $7,000. Uncle Kenny tells me maybe he won't live that long. Jeez. Uncle Kenny has worked hard and has lived a long, full life. He shouldn't have to worry about health care costs to add to other worries he is facing at mm -hmm. the end of his life. Affordable health care should be available to everyone at any age. I also suggest that we should be expanding Social Security and Medicare so that they are covering people who are going to be living longer.